What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got a really fun review slash overview to do with you guys. Why is it going to be fun? Because this is a hinder knife and if you've been a part of my channel for a while you'll know that I love hinder knives. This is a generation 6 fatty Warncliffe in black stone wash. Uh, this is an XM18 three and a half inch and it's also been completely dressed up because I have just like to do that every now and then. Um, if you're new to my channel, I like to do knife reviews, knife overviews, I like to do unboxings, I like to do discussion videos, I've got Quest for the Perfect Budget Knife on Saturdays generally, and The Knife Guy on Sundays. I like to upload literally every single day. Um, if that sounds like something you might be interested in, then go ahead and hit subscribe and make sure your notifications are set to all, because there's definitely more content coming. I'm also, you should know, a gigantic hinderer fan. Um, I have reviewed many hinder knives on this channel. This is actually, I, I'm losing track. This is actually my 23rd hinderer that I have owned. I don't know, own all of them anymore. I've had to sell them to actually acquire new ones, but I love hinderer knives. So I like to warn everybody, you're gonna get a lot of bias, but I've owned so many of them that I'm very aware of what people like and don't like and what I, what I personally consider good and bad about them. But hinder, Rick Hinderer is my absolute favorite knife maker. So just so you know that, just so that there's it's all out on the table and everybody knows. Um, this is going to be more of an overview than a review. I've reviewed the Gen 6 XM18. Um, there are so many different variants, you know, that if I, if I purchased every single variant of every single different size of hinder knife out there, number one, I'd be broke um, because there's way too many to count. Um, and, and number two, I, I don't know that, it, that anybody would be really be interested in that. <laughs> but um, this is uh, his Warncliffe variant, and it is the fatty variant, which means the blade stock thickness comes in at 187 thousandths versus the standard 165 thousandths on the standard Hinder XM18 three and a half inch. Um, for anybody who's wondering, that's the same blade stock thickness that's on the XM24. That's the, the older brother that's about 9.25 inches overall. Also, seems like I point this out in every single Hinder video that I've, I've ever done. Um, a lot of people like still are hanging on to old cliches um, about hinder knives, and I'll list them. Hinder knives don't flip. Hinder knives don't cut. Hinder knives use nylon washers. All of, none of that has been true since like 2014. It's that's been a long since. Over. Number one, all these new uh, triway systems. Um, you see that symbol right there it means triway. It means the internals, as far as the pivot go, can be switched out to phosphor bronze or Nylon, I mean, it literally comes with it. I've got one right here I can show you guys. Um, actually, no, the box the other one. This is a different hinderer. But in any case, it comes with all the internals to switch everything out. Do I have extra triway hardware in my box here? Yeah, I don't think so. The not any brand new hinderer that's a triway is going to come with phosphor bronze, the steel washer spacers that you need for the bearings, the bearings which will come pre-installed in the knife, and then nylon if you're somebody who really, really likes nylon. So. Rick Hinder's the only one who's doing this. He invented this triway system. Um, it, if you have a preference one, or the other, one over the other, then you can have all of that. On top of that, um, saying Hinder knives don't cut, that's very old. Hinder, all Hinder knives cut. How well they cut what material is fully dependent on the blade shape, the thickness. Hinder knives offer thickness anywhere from 112 thousandths on their, on their, um, their uh, slippy all the way up to 187 thousandths on their fatty XM18 three and a half inch and their XM24 models. On top of that, you can definitely get like sizes that you like, like they, they offer skinny variants of the XM24, meaning the XM24 comes in a 165 thousandth stock thick blade. The uh, XM18 three and a half inch comes in the fatty variant, which is 187, the standard variant, which is 165, and then they have a skinny variant, which is only 145 thousandths. That coupled with either their sheep's foot or their slicer grind makes for an actually really good slicer. If you need something thinner than that, you can actually go down to their three inch model and get a skinny three inch model, which is only 125 thousandths thick. So when you hear people say they don't cut, what they mean is, my one experience with my one hinder XM18 three and a half inch at 165 thousandths and it was a spanto grind didn't cut an apple as well as my insert knife that had a better blade shape and better thickness for exactly that task. <laughs> That's kind of a meaningless, I've had people say that before and it's, it's only partially true. I mean there are some situations where you would want a thicker blade stock or a very specific blade shape. For me as a hinderer collector, I have had about four hinderer users. 
So I have actually used these knives. My usage um, experience comes with um, definitely the Spanto and Harpoon Spanto. Those are the blades that, that have been my users. I've had two Spanto users and two Harpoon Spanto users. All the other blade shapes and hinder knives that I've owned have all been safe queens and just for me to enjoy because I'm, I'm a collector and a user and hinder knives are my favorite. So anyways, we're five minutes in. Let's talk about this knife. We have Hinderer's black stonewash finish, which is quickly becoming a favorite of mine. It is essentially the same stonewash and reflectivity as the standard stonewash. It's just black. It, it is actually, to my knowledge, a DLC. I'm not sure exactly how they achieve this, but it's very cool looking and very unique as far as what you generally see out there in the knife world. We have a very aggressive Warncliffe style blade. Uh, this blade is actually in CPM 20 CV. Rick Hinderer uses... 20CV, uses S35VN, he uses 3V, he uses 01. I, I'm, there's a whole bunch of stuff, you know. Um, in a lot of cases, you really only have a choice between uh, 20CV and S35VN. Uh, most of his new triways are going to come in 20CV. I don't know if this fatty Warncliffe in Gen 6 is still available. The thing with Hinderer knives is there are so many different blade shapes and so many different uh, finishes and styles and all that. But, and, and Rick Hinder has become a much larger, you know, operation. Rick Hinder Knives is a much larger operation than it was in 2012 when it was so small batch that people were taking advantage of selling these knives on the secondary market. Um, that's not an issue anymore. You can get an XM18. Getting exactly the XM18 uh, or the Hinder Knife that you want in exactly the right finish, that's going to be kind of difficult. Everything that he does is kind of small batch and it's cyclical. So. Like, for example, the very first Gen 6 blade shapes that came out were, oddly enough, the Skinner. Finding a brand new Gen 6 Skinner blade right now is almost impossible. You can find them on a secondary market, probably, but finding one brand new is almost impossible. The ones that are out right now, I, I don't know. You, they're, they're widely available at USA Made Blade, DLT Trading, uh, Blade HQ, blah, blah, blah. Pick your retailer. Um, widely available, it just may not be exactly the right blade shape and uh, finish that you want. Um, I like the fatty variants. They're definitely not the best slicers, and especially in this Warncliffe style, um, that's not really why I bought this. I bought it because it's cool, and I just like the fatty versions. On top of that, I really wanted to get a fatty in this black stonewash finish, and I've been holding out for the Spanto, but it's just not, the Gen 6 fatty Spanto has not been made yet. He's only, the only fatty he's made in Gen 6 is this Warncliffe, and these were running out quickly. I found a retailer that only had a couple left, and I thought, you know what, I'm gonna go for it. Uh, this is the right time. Um, really, really nice. Just so you guys know, all the chamfering, all the lines and everything, these are, this has all been knocked down nicely. It's very smooth. There's no sharp edges everywhere. As far as symmetry goes and just overall fit and finish, these blades are absolute perfection. They are beautiful. Um, really, really nice. Um, now, on this one, I really wanted to do a bronze and black theme. So I did go ahead and pick myself up uh, a uh, um, three and a half inch full thickness unmilled bronze titanium scale. All the new scales going forward are going to be milled a little bit, so they're going to be a little bit lighter. I'll weigh this one for you guys real quick. This isn't a normal review. If you're new to my channel, this generally isn't how I do a review. This is just me really enjoying Hinder Knives and doing an overview for you guys because I've already reviewed the, a multitude of Hinder Knives multiple times. This knife, this full titanium, unmilled, fatty Warncliffe is coming in at 6.24 ounces. That's a lot. For me, it's right there on the line. I don't really mind it. Now, here's the funny thing. My other Gen 6 is also full titanium, is unmilled, and it's the standard thickness. It's a non-flipper spear point. This one actually weighs, oh wait, now is it, my scale's gonna prove me wrong? <laughs> well, the other day it didn't say that. Maybe I just didn't weigh it correctly. But they're not too far off. 6.24 uh, versus 6.1. I would have thought the fatty on this would have made this substantially heavier. It really doesn't. And I think it's because the Warncliffe blade shape actually has, I mean, if it was in the same thickness, I think the Warncliffe would actually have less material on it than the spear point or the spanto, given how aggressive this drop is here and down to the tip. But because this blade is just a little bit thicker, it's um, you know coming up with about a tenth of an ounce more weight. Than, than this one. Both of these knives, Hinder XM18s in general, you know, they're they're pretty robust knives. You know, I mean, there's it's no secret that these are robust knives, but their carry profile is really good. It's better with without the flipper tab. These, uh, as far as I know, um, you know, a lot of people ask me like, where can I get a non-flipper Gen 6? I think they're gone now, guys. Um, and I just was barely able to snag this one a while back. 
Um, without the flipper tab, they definitely carry a little bit better. But even with the flipper tab, they're fine. They, there's no, I've never really had an issue. People who are gonna have an issue are people that carry other things in their, their pocket. Um, they're also accommodating for tip up or tip down. For left-handed people, Rick Hinder does not make a left-handed frame lock as of right now. He makes scales that are that will accept the um, the titanium or the um, the pocket clip on the other side, but it's still going to be a right-handed frame lock. Um, and like I said, with the titanium scales, those are right now those are still two hundred dollars. That's a lot of money for a titanium scale. I just I just you guys know I love textured titanium. I love the way Rick Hinder does it. For me, it's worth it. For most people, it's not. <laughs> Considering you can get a really good knife for two hundred dollars. Most people aren't gonna to wanna to do that. I'm not gonna sit here and pretend everybody should do that. Um, but uh, the new ones moving forward are all gonna be milled out. If you want one that's not milled out, I suggest you grab one right now because I have a feeling they're gonna be a thing of the past. I like the full solidness, the full thickness. You know, I, I just like that. This one's got some other aftermarket hardware. You're gonna notice here that the pivot is different. Um, I have the original pivots. Actually, the original pivot, it was satin. Uh, this one right here. I had the one that I intended to put in there, which was black, and then I can't remember where this one came from. I have another bronze one, but I always keep my Hinder hardware. Uh, I wanted to do a black and bronze theme with this. I actually took the pivot out of a ZT0393 and put it in this because it just matched perfectly, and it, it works perfectly, and it's a Torx head, which makes it easier. I mean, would, in my opinion, probably make it easier and make a lot of people more happy. Um, it also has no Loctite on it, and despite how many times I've flipped it, has remained absolutely perfectly centered, and the action is great. I mean, it's awesome. It hasn't backed out of there at all. I've got the black hardware in here. I kept the original stonewashed black standoffs. You can get DLC uh, coated standoffs in the aftermarket, but the only way to get the actual black, black uh, stonewashed standoffs is by buying an XM18 that has that black stonewash finish already applied to it. So I left those in there because I thought those were cool. Added some uh, bronze handle nuts, bronze lock bar stabilizer, bronze uh, filler tab, and bronze pocket clip. And I also had somebody send me some bronze anodized uh, pocket clip screws. I don't think those are made by Rick Hinder, but they fit just fine. Unfortunately, you cannot buy the, um, the, uh, the actual pivot barrel. You cannot get that anodized in titanium that's steel only, or sometimes it's coated depending, depending on uh, what, what style of uh, knife that you get. If you get a black stone wash knife, it's definitely gonna be steel. I think some all DLC versions of this knife will have black uh, pivot barrels, but I, I don't know that for sure. This in the aftermarket, you can get a titanium anodized version of this screw in the aftermarket. Unless you're getting the vintage version of the XM18, that will um, be uh, this steel color. And then the thumb studs are also on all Rick Hinder knives, as far as I know. Um, they're going to be the satin color, unless you're getting a custom in some custom XMs or signature series XMs. They are bronze. And then on the, um, I actually have a vintage one up here that I'll show you. Uh, you can see here on the vintage version of the XM, this is bronze. And the thumb studs, which it, it's hard to tell, but they also have a bronze um, treatment applied to them. I'll put this right up against the standard XM18. You can see this one's slightly more bronze. People always drool over this um, this uh, vintage one, and it is awesome. It still has the titanium scale on there, um, but um, uh, it is it is definitely definitely an awesome knife. Um, but anyways, um, if you're gonna go, the here's the biggest problem with Hinder knives. I mean, they're, they're one of the most accommodating uh, knife styles out there or knife brands out there in terms of modularity because there's so many different parts that are available for all the different models. If I wanted to switch out the hardware between those two, I could do it, meaning I could put the bronze scale on the satin one, I could take the pocket clip from, from uh, the, um, the no choice or the uh, non-flipper and I could put it on this one. You know, whatever I want to do, I can do that, but it's expensive. Buying a full set of titanium hardware for either one of these knives, not counting the scale, is 100 bucks. That means your, your handle nuts, your uh, LBS, your lock bar stabilizer, your pocket clip, your filler tab, and the screws for the front and the pivot for the front, that's gonna run you about 100 to 110 bucks almost anywhere. Um, and that's if you're able to buy them as a set. If you have to buy them individually, it's even more than that. The titanium scales, uh, they run 200 bucks. In some situations, you can find some places on eBay that'll sell them for about 150. Most of the time, if they're brand new, they're gonna be 200 bucks. The knives at base run 425. That's for one like this. The black DLC finish runs extra and the fatty variant runs extra. So if you're buying a stonewashed version of this knife, it'll be 475. 
considering this is blackstone washed and a fatty, it's actually $515 at base. That's pretty much outside of the range of anything that I would recommend to everybody. I will recommend the base version of the XM18 to everybody, but it's at my absolute peak. 425 bucks, any more than that, and it's kind of difficult. It's already difficult to recommend anything over 200, but I love Hinder Knives so much that I, I still recommend them. Um, at $515, and given the thickness of the blade and the shape of the blade, no, that's just, it's not gonna be for everybody. I bought this knife purely out of cool factor. In terms of function, it's fantastic. Absolutely smooth, absolutely easy to deploy. Um, doesn't matter if I'm using a thumb stub like this, I can actually, despite this one having a heavier detent, I can do the reverse flick on it. It's just awesome, I love it. The $515 plus the 200 for the scale, plus the almost 100 I paid for the extra hardware. Uh, what are we looking at here, 715 plus, yeah, this is over an $800 knife. Do I think there's $800 worth of knife here? No. For me there was, definitely, but you can get some crazy stuff for 800 bucks. Somebody who's obsessed with hinder knives and wanting to build their own and like, and you know, if you've got the funds to do it, um, then uh, then yeah, absolutely. But is this gonna be for everybody? Is this somebody I can say is for everybody? No. This knife up here is a better, it's a better um, design for actual use. No flipper tab. Um, the all stone wash finish is probably gonna be better for, for actual use. Nothing's gonna wear, wear away. But the same steel, it's probably a more utilitarian blade shape and it's a lot less expensive considering there weren't any other custom parts to buy except for the scale. This is 625, even without the titanium scale, which is not something you really need. It's only 425 bucks, which is really the peak. That's about, the like I said, the basic hinder is the one I'd recommend to people. Are they still really, really fun? If you're gonna get into this price range and you like the way that hinderers look, are you gonna be satisfied with buying hinders and buying custom parts? Yeah, if you're already kind of there in the price range, yeah, you're gonna have a lot of fun with this. But to everybody else who's been spending, you know, it's like I always say, most people who are into knives, like really, really into knives, are never gonna spend more than 150 bucks on a knife. And a lot of people are never gonna spend more than 50, you know? So can I recommend these knives to those people? Probably not, you know? It's probably gonna, you know, not gonna be something that if you spend all that money on it, it's probably, you're probably gonna be like, well, it, it sure is definitely made better, but it's not doing it a whole lot more than my $50 knife or my, do I think these are better knives than $50 knives? Yes. Do I think they're better knives than $150 knives? Yes, but it is increasingly more difficult past that $150 mark. It's like, I have a video about diminishing returns. It's increasingly more difficult past the $150 mark to continuously suggest that someone spend more money to get more out of their knife, you know? Uh, if the end of the world came, I'd be really happy that I had this with me. This is what I currently refer to as Excalibur. Do I think uh, this one would do fine as well? Yeah, definitely. This is just as durable as any other Hinder XM18. It just has that extra flair, that extra cool factor to it. And there is a benefit to a worn clip. They're really good at the draw cuts. Um, I guess if you're a self-defense person, there's a benefit there, but I don't know anything about that and I don't care about it. Um, and I mean, I don't know, the Warncliffe just looks cool, you know? It's not gonna be for everybody, but it just looks cool. You have that nice choil up there. It's just a great, uh, just a really, really cool blade. I don't know that there's really a whole lot more that I can say here, guys. I just wanted to kind of show this to you and I just, I hadn't done a video yet. It's centered, it's got nice early lockup, steel lock bar insert, no blade play up down left to right, it's great. I'm gonna, I mean, I'm gonna say nice things about Hinder every time I show them pretty much, unless I finally find a model that I just don't like. But that's gonna be pretty much it for today's video, everybody. If you enjoyed this video, or at least found it mildly entertaining, uh, go ahead and feel free to leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, then go ahead and click on this Metal Complex logo that's right here and subscribe to my channel because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.